Worship God in this place, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all praise God for the worship team, man. Glorious, man. Glorious. Glorious. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the master's name of Jesus, we thank you for allowing us this opportunity to enter into your presence this morning. Your word says in Psalm 16, verse 11, that in your presence there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So God, we bless you and we thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that according to Psalms 34, verse 4, your word says, when I sought the Lord, he answered me. Yes, and he freed hallelujah. me from all my fears. It says, before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear in Isaiah 65, verse 24. So I thank you, Lord, for hearing our voice in the midst of everything that we're going through. We bless you and we revere you, Lord, that the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayers. Hallelujah. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil, according to 1 Peter 3, verse 12. We thank you, Father, for saturating this atmosphere. We thank you, Lord, for silencing all distractions, both internally as well as externally. And Lord, as I stand before your people, God, I decrease so that you can increase. Speak directly into the hearts and minds of your people, Father, and give them a rhema word that will shift the trajectory of their lives. God, I honor you. I bless you, and I thank you, Father, that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. 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 Hey, y'all praise God. Man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before y'all sit down, I want y'all to tell a few people around you and tell them broken pieces. Broken pieces. Broken pieces. Babies, you are free to go. Youth and young adults, y'all are free to go. Babies, you are free to go. Youth and young adults, y'all are free to go. Y'all give him a hand. Give him a hand. Hallelujah. Can I speak life into you this morning? I just want to speak life into you this morning. That's, that's, that's what I want to do, man. By the unction of the Holy Spirit, I want to speak life into each and every last person that's under the sound of my voice here and through the airwaves. Raise your hand if in some areas you felt insignificant. In some areas you feel as though, you know what, I'm just not uh, uh, amounting to what I should be amounting to. But let me tell you something. I read a quote about a year or so ago that stood out to me that said, broken crayons still color. Broken crayons still color. Meaning, if you look at yourself in that mirror, you are not beyond repair. I am not beyond repair. We've all been through situations in our lives, and I stand here today to encourage you. And when you can't encourage, when you don't have anybody else to encourage you, you have to encourage yourself. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6, that, they, that David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. When was the last time you stood in that mirror and just started speaking life over yourself? Because you do know that you're snared by the words of your mouth, according to Proverbs chapter 6, verse 2. Your words or your life is a sum total of the words that you've spoken over it. Your, your life is a sum total of the words that you've spoken on it. If you go back from past to present and to see what you're walking in, it's a sum total of things that you've spoken over yourself, not what other people have spoken over you. Broken crayons. What do they do, you guys? Still they still color. Everybody say, I still color. I still, I still color. color. I still shine bright in the midst of everything that I've been through in my life. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 14 in the message translation. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 14 in the message translation. Everybody say broken pieces. Broken pieces. Yes, 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 yes. Jeremiah, who was referred to in scripture as the weeping prophet. Huh. The weeping, the weeping, the weeping prophet. He even wrote the book of Lamentation. The word of the word lamentation means to lament or to mourn. He preached for 40 years, and not one person got converted because of their hard hearts. Huh. Imagine being that kind of witness. 
You'll quit after the second day. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 14 in the message translation. The message translation of scripture is not a part of the canonized scripture. It's not a part of the actual study Bible. It is a paraphrased Bible. It breaks it down in the modern day vernacular. The language that you and I can understand. Everybody say God. God. Jeremiah is approaching the father. He said, God, pick up the what? Pieces. Pick up the pieces. Put me back together again. You are my what? Praise. You are my praise. Raise your hand if you ever felt like there were some broken pieces in your life. <laughs> there were some broken pieces to the puzzle of your life. And you're like, Lord, I don't know what else to do. I don't know what else to say. I don't even know what else to pray. But Lord, I need you to put me back together again. Oh my God. Oh my God. Because of things that people have spoken over me. Because of places that I've been in my life. For, for, for me to place my vessel in places that I know I shouldn't have been placing it into. And Lord, I need you to gather the fragmented pieces of my soul. God, pick up the pieces. Put me back together again. You are my praise. I worship him for who he is, but I praise him for what he's done. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth, John 4, verse 24. But I praise you, Father God of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned, and you have revealed them to little children, according to Luke 10, verse 21. I worship him for who he is, but I praise him for what he's done in my life. When was the last time you just gave God a praise out of nowhere? Hallelujah. Just out of nowhere, you're like, oh, no, oh, like, Lord, gee, what is wrong with this person? Just praise him. Praise him in the midst of everything that you've been through in your life. Thank him for bringing you out of situations, past, present, and future. Father, I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you because if you've done it before, you'll do it again. The Bible says in Hebrews 13, verse 8, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Everybody say, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, pick up the pieces. Put me back together again. You are, you are my praise. Everybody say broken pieces. Broken pieces. To break into fragments, it means that it's fractured, it's smashed, it's splintered, it's imperfect or incomplete. It's imperfect or incomplete. Now the Bible says in Psalms 34 verse 18 that God is close to the broken hearted and he saved the crushed in spirit. Raise your hand if you ever felt yourself in a place the way you like, Lord, I don't even hear you. Amen. I don't hear you anymore. I've been trying to pray. I've been trying to fast. I've been trying to stay in your presence. All of this stuff is going upside down in my life. Lord, where are you in this season of my life? It said that he's close to the broken heart. And he saves the crushed in spirit. That word close means to be intimate. Maybe you're yelling when you need to just drown the noise out and listen. Pay attention. Everybody say hear. 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 You have to hear. You take out the H, what you got? E-A-R. Hear with the ear of your heart. Hallelujah. Hear from within. It's an intimacy that God wants to bring you to. And sometimes, sometimes God has to separate you in the midst of your brokenness. He has to separate you from family members and God knows I know it hurts. He has to separate you from friends and God knows I know it hurts. He has to separate you from some jobs that you've been tied to and God knows I know it hurts. He has to separate you from some situations and the reason why he has to separate you is because he's removing the locks from out of your life. He's removing the locks from out of your life. He told Abraham, leave your country, your people, and your father's household and go to the land that I will show you in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. But he didn't leave by himself. He took Lot with him. He took his nephew with him. Can I tell you something? A lot of you are being broken and a lot of you are still in the same place because you still have the locks connected to you. You got to love them when they come. And when that season is up, you got to love them when they leave. It's a time for everything <laughs> and a season for every activity under heaven, according to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. I have to know what season I'm in in my life when I'm in a place of brokenness. I have to separate myself, come out from amongst them. 
and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. So you mean to tell me that God is not going to receive me until I separate myself from some situations? The Bible just told me, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Come out from amongst them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. He'll receive me when I'm not connected to the unclean thing. Are you connected to things that are unclean? Are you connected to people, places, and things that are stifling or hindering your growth in the things of God? Broken colors. Jesus. <laughs> Steel color. Everybody say the broken pieces. The broken. It's the bro he's close to the broken hearted. And he's saved. He saves the crushed in spirit. Sometimes, don't you know that he has to save you from you? Sometimes he has to save you from you. Why? Because the Bible says in Romans chapter 7 verse 18, in me dwelleth no good thing. In me dwelleth no good thing. Meaning sin was fixed and operated in Paul's soul. He said when I would do good, hey, evil is present. I want to do good. I want to do what's right. But anytime I want to do good, evil is present. They always bring a temptation my way. And Lord, I know I'm not strong enough. That's why I need accountability. Jesus. And I don't need a yes man. I don't need somebody who's just going to tell me, okay, everything is good. But you know, the Bible says faithful are the wounds of a friend. But the tents of the enemy are deceitful. <laughs> Proverbs 27, verse 6. Are y'all getting blessed so far? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Everybody say the broken pieces. The broken The broken. The broken pieces. The broken pieces. I want you to do me a favor and go to Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1. Stay in the message translation. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1 in the message translation. Broken. Broken pieces. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1. Everybody say that will be the day. That will be the day. That will be the day when seven women, everybody say seven women. Seven women. Ooh, Jesus. Will gang up on one man saying, We'll take care of ourselves. Get our own food and clothes. Just give us a child. Make us pregnant. So we'll have something to live for. God's branch. Everybody say standards. 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 Seven women will gang up on one man. And that's why a lot of them are out here doing whatever they want to do. Because no pressure is being applied to their lives. Jesus. All that they say, look, no, I take care of my own. I got my own. I'm independent. Just get me pregnant. You got to make sure. That you're looking for a spouse and not a sponsor. Jesus. Jesus. You better make sure that you're looking for somebody who God can connect you and join you together with. Because the Bible says what God has joined together. Hey, let no man separate in Mark 10 verse 9. Is this making sense to y'all so far? It's time for you to up your standards. The reason why seven women are ganging up on one man is because those women don't know their authority. Those women don't know their worth. You have to know your worth, and you know how you have to know your value in this season of your life. God, I love your word. Are y'all getting blessed so far? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Go back to verse one. Go back to verse one. Go back to verse one. That will be the day when seven women will gang up on one man, saying, "We'll take care of ourselves, get our own food and clothes. Just give us a child, make us pregnant, so we'll have let's go something to live for." God's branch. You mean to tell me that that's what you'll have to live for? Just having a child and doing whatever you want to do and not putting no responsibility on anybody? Everybody say true story. True story. I was witnessing to this woman once before <coughs> and, 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 and she tells me, she tells me, she says, you know what? I had dreams. I had goals. I had aspirations. And I said, what happened? She said, you know what? I always, as a little girl, dreamed to have a husband and two children. I said, what ended up happening? She said, I ended up having a husband. And I said, how many kids you got? She said, I got two kids. She said, I envisioned this from a little girl. And I said, where your husband at now? She said, I'm divorced. I said, why are you divorced? She said, because I couldn't see past the husband and two kids. I couldn't see beyond me just having a husband and two kids. I didn't know that I had to fight for my family, according to Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 14. Not against them, but fight for them. This is work. This is effort. Anytime you put your hand to the plow, you have to 
be committed and you can't look back. Is this making sense to you? Yes. Everybody say my standards. My standards. Hallelujah. 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 Put my picture up there. My wife back there. Put my picture up there. Hallelujah. Real quick. Put my picture up there. Standards. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Jesus. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, that we love him because he first loved us. Amen. Wow. 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 That's some great news right there, Gerald. So you mean to tell me you wouldn't choose God on your own? Probably not. Probably not, because your pleasures and your flesh and your self-gratification, it wants what it wants, and you'll do whatever you can to, to capitulate and to surrender to your flesh. It says that we love him because he first loved us. I remember Shawan and I, we were playing once before, and uh, I said, girl, please. I said, ain't nobody worried about what you're talking about, man. I said, you don't even love me. You like me. She said, boy, please, I loved you first. Oh. <laughs> Snapped her neck at me hard, Ashley. She said, I loved you first. And I thought about this scripture. I thought about this scripture. After how many times have you said, Lord, you know what? I don't even know if you, you like me. I don't know if you care about me. Because the first thing that we do is we equate our relationship with our heavenly father with people that's here on this earth. Yes. And the Bible says that God is not a man that he should love. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Does he speak and not that hate? Does he promise and not fulfill? In Numbers 23, verse 19. Is this making sense to y'all? Put my picture up there. Put my picture up. Put my picture up. Put my picture up. Hallelujah. Can I get it? Hallelujah. There you go. Blow that picture up. Put that, make that picture big. Y'all see this young lady right here? Beautiful young lady, right? Beautiful young lady. She has a story. So y'all see what she has, right? She, she, she has the American flag. She is a, a nationally known bobsledder. And not only that, she is a nationally known hurdler for the Olympics. So she's a very accomplished young lady. Her name is Lola Jones. Everybody say Lola Jones. Lola, Lola Jones. Jones. Lola Jones is a beautiful young lady. Now watch this. This woman, just by looking at her, how old do you think she is? 25. 25. That woman is 41 years old. That woman is 41 years old. Lola Jones is 41 years old. Now watch this. She is getting flack. And she is getting ridiculed when it comes to her dating life. Because she is 41 years old and she's still a virgin. Because of her Christian upbringing and because of her home, a lot of people are giving her flack and backlash. She's being persecuted for her purity. Jesus. She's being persecuted for her purity. 41 years old. And one of the comments that was spoken to her in an interview as I'm sitting down and I'm listening to her, a guy ended up reaching out to her and telling her, lower your standards or die alone. Lower your standards or die alone. And she said, never. <laughs> she said, never. I'll do whatever the father tells me to do. She is unapologetically her because of her upbringing and because of the root system. Now, am I saying that if you've actually been in a situation to where you've been touched or you've been, been, been in a situation to where you've been promiscuous or whatever the situation is, that you can't seal that back up? Absolutely. And you wait on the one that your soul loves. Hallelujah. You wait on that individual. You focus on focus. You focus on developing you and your relationship with the Father. That's what matters the most. It's making sense to y'all. Amen. Uh huh. Uh huh. He said, "Lower." He said, "Lower your standards, or die alone." That's hatred, ain't it? Jesus. Lower your standards, or die alone. And she said, "Never." Why? Because I serve a God who has standards. Yes. Hallelujah. Everybody say, "Give me Bible." Hey, I will if you don't yell at me. The Bible says in Isaiah 59 verse 19, when the enemy comes in, like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Huh, God has standards. God has standards. And so should you. So should I. See, because when you connect yourself, let's go there, Holy Spirit. When you connect yourself to individuals, what you have to realize is that one plus one in the spirit doesn't equal two. One plus one equals whoever you have been with and whoever that other individual has been with. When you lay down with an individual, there are some transferences that's taking place. Bodily fluids are being uh, uh, are taking place and being exchanged on the inside of an individual. And that's what you get what we call soul ties. Everybody say soul ties. Soul. A reforming or a reshaping of the soul that produces a godly or ungodly attachment. Yes. A reforming or reshaping of the soul that produces a godly 
or ungodly attachment. That's what a soul tie is. You find yourself in a place to where you start to conform and comply to the individual that you connect yourself with. Is this making sense to you? Amen. Woo, Jesus. Touch your neighbor and say, I don't think they're teaching that. I don't think they're teaching me, that. Me, 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 me. Now watch this. Watch this. For every sperm cell that reaches the egg, there are millions that don't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For every sperm cell that reaches the egg, there are millions that don't. Everybody say, what you saying, Pastor? What you saying, Pastor? Say that again. What I'm saying is you're a born winner. What I am saying is that you are a born winner. For every sperm cell that doesn't reach the egg, that, that reaches the egg, there are millions that don't. You made it. You made it. So you're a born winner. Hallelujah. You're a born winner. The Bible says that every, every hair is numbered on your head. So don't be afraid, according to Luke 12, verse 7. God is so precise. God is so strategic in the way that he's made you, in the way he's formed you. So you can't. Just let anybody run you amok. Oh, I'm going to get flat for this, and I'm going to be 100% accurate and real with each and every last one of y'all. Y'all say, Pastor, be real. Pastor, be That's real. all I know how to be. That's all I know how to be. Do you know I got individuals that got mad at me because I preach about marriage? Jesus. I get individuals, I get individuals that get upset with me because you're going over there with them, and every time you come home, you act different. <laughs> you know your worth when you come home. You know your value when you come home. You just stay on away from now. Stay on away. We, we've been doing good until you start going to that church. <laughs> Jesus. I'm going to give you the word. I'm going to give you the truth. I don't care what the situation is. You will know your worth and you will know your value before you leave this place. Hallelujah. The Bible says whoever touches you touches the apple of my eye. In Zechariah chapter 2 verse 8. Y'all got me preaching in this morning, man. Is this making sense to y'all? Amen. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm still not scared. I'm still not scared. I hope you don't think I am. Now watch this. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1. You can go there in the NIV translation for me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is the word that came from YouTube. Huh? What does that say? This is the word that came from SermonCentury.com. From the Lord. Okay. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Let me tell you something. As I stand here, I am here as your pastor. I am here as your shepherd. But I am not the ultimate. Everything that I tell you, you go back and you study the scriptures for yourself Amen. to see if what I'm telling you is the truth or not. Amen. See if you can find this in the Bible by yourself or not. It's time for you to grow up in the things of Christ. Stop taking people's words at, at face value. And if you're in a place where you don't know what a scripture means, please don't try to interpret that stuff on your own. Because if you try to interpret the stuff on your own, then it's going to cause a spirit of confusion to enter into your life. Is this making sense to you? That is no pun intended or to any, any individual. But as a shepherd and as a leader, I'm telling you, you have to go where you're getting fed. How can they hear without a preacher? How can they preach unless he be sent? Jesus. Romans 10 verse 14. Is this making sense to y'all? This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Let's go to the next verse. Go down to the potter's house. And there, I will do what? Give you I will message. give you my message. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That changes the game right there. That changed the game because the father just said, the pata just said, I will give you my message. And there's a lot of people that's trying to run with their message. There's a lot of people that's trying to run with their message and promote what they want to do. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Hey, and the gates of hell will not prevail. Hallelujah. That's why hell is prevailing in a lot of different places because Jesus didn't plant it there. Amen. And his lampstand is not there. 
Is this making sense to y'all? He said, I will give you my message. Let God's curse fall on anyone, including myself, who preaches any other message than the one we told you about. Even if an angel comes from heaven and preaches any other message, let him be forever cursed. Galatians chapter 1 verse 8. This was Paul speaking. He said, let God's curse fall on anyone, including myself, who preaches any other message. Hallelujah. Why are you so quick to surrender and listen for hours and hours at the end to another message? What is the message of Christ? He said, and what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins uh, uh, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Everybody say the scriptures. First Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4. That is the gospel. That is the message. His death, his burial, his resurrection. Amen. Is this making sense to y'all? Amen. Uh-huh. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. Let's go to the next verse. So, I did what? I went down. I went down to where? To the potter's house. So he was obedient. He was obedient. You expect God to speak and you ain't even been obedient. Lord, give me another word. Lord, give me another prophecy. Lord, tell me something different this time. I'm not going to tell you anything different if you didn't do what I told you to do last time. The word still stands. The promise still stands. I'm not going to change up on what I told you to do in the first place. Everybody say, be obedient. be obedient. He said, so I went down to the potter's house and I saw him. So I'm working at the wheel. Hallelujah. So I'm working at the wheel. Let's go to the next verse. But, everybody say, but. But, but the pot he was shaping. My Lord, help me, Father. From the clay was marred, meaning it was flawed in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot. Shaping it as seemed best to him. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. Have you ever felt like you were marred in the hands of the Lord? Have you ever found yourself in a place to where you felt like, Lord, I don't even think I'm worthy enough to look up to you because of everything that I've been through. I'm too marred. I'm too broken. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares about me. I need you in this situation. But I'm too ashamed to even lift my head up to heaven. And the Bible says that no one who puts their hope in you will ever be put to shame. Hallelujah. Psalms 25, verse 3. Is this making sense to you? Amen. Watch this. Watch this. I need a person. I need a person to come here. I need a person to come here. Watch this. There you go. There you go. Here's that. Hold this for me. Hold that for me. Here's Hold up a little bit. Hold it up. Hold it back down. Hold it up. I'm <laughs> now, now, what does this look like to you guys? Huh? It's like broken pottery, right? Broken pottery. And and have you ever asked yourself, Lord, can you still use me like this? Can you still use me while I'm while I'm broken? Can you still use me while I'm destroyed? See, I asked y'all this question because when I went and purchased these, that was sitting on the shelf. That was sitting on the shelf. And watch this. They still sold it to me. <laughs> <laughs> So me using the wisdom of God, I say, can I get a deal? I say, can I get a discount? I say, the reason why I asked for a discount because y'all still have that on the shelf. I said, but I still want it. I do want it, Rachel. I, I want it. I'm not, no, no, no. I'm not going to deny it. I love, I love exactly how it looks because I ain't going to have to go home and break it. I still want it, Patty. I still want it. But I just need a discount. Have you been selling yourself short and giving too many people discounts? Jesus. Have you been, have you been selling yourself short in some areas of your life and giving individuals discount when you don't know your full worth? When all you have to do is go back to the potter and let him reform you. Ooh, hallelujah. Let him reshape you. Let him remake you over again. It was $1.58, original price. A 
But they sliced it all the way down, Miss Linda. I purchased that for 50 cents. I waited too. It was people in line, Miss Veronica. It was people in line. I was the first one there, and it started. Say, sir, if you want to step, no, I ain't stepping nowhere. I'm still in line. Uh-uh, I ain't, uh-uh, I ain't finna miss out on this blessing. I ain't finna miss on this blessing, because watch this. One man's trash is another man's. It's all in the way that the eyes behold. So I don't care what they've said about you. I don't care what they've spoken over your life. I don't care how they touched you. I don't care how they redeemed you. And I don't care how many flaws you have. God is still going to accept you. Flaws. Yes. Hallelujah. Flaws and all. Flaws and all. Flaws and all. Flaws and all. God love you with your bald head itself. God love you with your snaggitude itself. God love you with your limping self. God love you with your stiff back self. God love you with your broken toe self. God love you with your bad breath self. He love you! It's time out for stopping. It's time for you to stop focusing on the external. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. He looks at the spirit of a man, 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. Is this making sense to y'all so far? Yes. But the pot, huh, he was shaping from the clay, was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best. Best to you? No, 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 no. Best to him. Best to him. Come on, D. Come on, D. Come on, D. Come on, D. Can I, can I, can I submit something to you as I stand here today? This was your old nature, and this is your new nature. This, this is who you used to be, and this is who you are now. Hallelujah. See, see, see they'll do everything they possibly can to try to hold this person against you. He'll do, they'll do anything they possibly can. Oh, I remember. I remember when. I, I, I remember that. You know word on the street is. You know they say. Hey, look, between me and you. Hey, you ain't hear this from me, but. See, that's what they want to do. They want to bring up things in the past. And the enemy can never beat you with anything present. He always holds you captive to your past so that you can't step into your destiny. God, I thank you for the broken pieces. Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you that I'm flawed and all. I thank you, Lord, that I'm no longer the same individual that I used to be. The things that used to touch me and move me, they don't move me the way they used to move me. <laughs> the people that used to try to entice me, they don't entice me anymore. The only thing I can give you now is a scripture. The only thing I can give you now is a hallelujah. The only thing I can give you now is a Lord thank you. And I praise you for my brother and my sister in Christ. That's all I can give you now. That's all I can give you. That's all I can give you. My old, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. And the what? And the new has come. Y'all praise God for this illustration. Still got the receipt, I'm going to take me back. <laughs> Somebody said I would. Now watch this. I heard it said like this before. You're born looking like your parents, but you die looking like your decisions. You're born looking like your parents, but you die looking like your decisions. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 1. Go there in the message translation. We're there today. We're there today. We're there today. You're born looking like your parents, but you die looking like your decisions. He said today, I'll give you a choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice that you will make, oh, that you will choose life so that you and your descendants may live. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. Is this making sense to y'all? Amen. Uh-huh. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 1. In the message translation. I'm going to go 1 and 2 in the message translation. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Are y'all being blessed so far? Amen. Did y'all need to be built up? Amen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Everybody say good reputation. Good reputation. Good, good reputation is better than what, you guys? A fat, uh, fat bank account. Man. Your death date tells more than your what? Birth date. Wow. 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 Let me read that again, Ando. Let me read that again. A good reputation is better than a fat bank account. Your death date tells more than your birth date. Go to the next verse. You learn more at a funeral, my God in heaven, than at a feast. After all, that's where we'll end up. We might discover something from it. You'll learn more at a what? At a funeral than a feast. Go back to the next verse. Now I had to pray that out. I had to pray that out. I had to pray that out because Kevin, when I was when I was when I was younger, I would hear my grandma and I would hear my mom always say this, but I never knew what it meant. I don't want nobody lying at my funeral. I, ne I never knew what that meant until I got older. I don't need you lying in my funeral. Don't you just put me in heaven? Because there's a lot of people who just getting put in heaven when they live Hellenistic here on earth. It says your death day should tell more about you than your birthday. Is this making sense to y'all? How did you live? It's not about uh, uh, the, the, the Genesis and the Revelation. What did you do in between? What did you do for people? Well, did you have a mouth full of scriptures and a heart full of hatred? Jesus. The Bible says do not withhold good from those who deserve it. Hey, when it is in your power to act in Proverbs 3, verse 27. Is this making sense to y'all? What are you doing to display your shining light? Letting people know. Let me tell you something. I don't care if you're broken. I don't care if you're broken. Are you speaking to people from your pain or from the pot? And watch this. Sometimes pain doesn't always show up physically. You may think you healed until something triggers it. Amen. You may think you healed until something. Oh, wait a minute. I realized that I wasn't as healed as I thought I was. Sometimes you never know what's on the inside of you until that pressure is applied. Until, oh, wait a minute. Hold on real quick. They didn't push that button. I thought I was over there. See, when God shows you something, bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. When God shows you something, it is not for you to just identify it. You got to identify the situation and then deal with it. Amen. That's how real healing takes place. Is this making sense to y'all? Ezekiel. Ezekiel 16, verse 44. I'm flowing. That's not in my notes. Ezekiel 16, verse 44. Ezekiel 16, verse 44. Uh -huh. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Are y'all being blessed? Amen. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 16. Let's start at verse 44. <coughs> go back there in the NIV translation for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Everybody say broken pieces. Broken pieces. Mm-hmm. 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 Go there. She go there. Bible says in Isaiah 26, verse 3, and I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me because he trusts me. Have you ever heard somebody say, I'm gonna give you a piece of my mind? See, that's a problem with a lot of y'all. Y'all done gave too many pieces away. You done gave too many pieces of your mind away, and now you have no peace. Jesus. That's good. Because you're focusing on this person, you focusing on that person. You focusing on them, and let me tell you something. Every story sounds true until someone sets the record straight. Don't chase a lie. Don't chase a lie because you're trying to, uh, what? You say what? You say what? And now you just loop it. And then if you go and confront the individual, I ain't say that. Everybody say broken pieces. Mm -hmm. I bet you'll keep your mind now, won't you? Uh huh. Everyone who quotes Proverbs will quote this proverb about you, like mother, like daughter. Go to the next verse. You are a true daughter of your mother who despised her husband and her children. And you are a true sister of your sister who despised their husbands and their children. Your mother was a Hittite and your father a Everite. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to say they, they cousin in the Bible. <laughs> Your mother was a Hittite. Everybody say Hittite. 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 What is Hittite? A Hittite is a spirit of fear. 
a spirit of fear, gripped with fear. Everybody say an Amorite. An Amorite. Amorite. What is an Amorite? Slanderous. Gossiper. <laughs> a gossiper. A gossiper. So watch this. Your mother was a, he uh, was a Hittite. She was gripped with fear. And your daddy came from a lineage of Amorites full of gossip and slander. So just imagine going half on a child and now that child is dealing with fear that's uncontrollable and gossip that's uncontrollable. Jesus. That's generational curses. Jesus. Whoever quotes this proverb will say like mother, like daughter. Like mother, like daughter. It's time for you to break some generational curses. Amen. It's time for you to break some generational cycles in your life. It's time for this stuff to be broken. If I can talk about generational curses, I can talk about, uh, talk about the generational blessings. Amen. Because there's Hallelujah. blessings upon blessings that's on my head and on my life. And I have to walk therein. Amen. Is this making sense to you? Amen. Like mother, like daughter. Raise your hand if you ever face. See, there's a difference between fear and a spirit of fear. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, hey, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. That spirit of fear will grip you and you will never walk in destiny. Do you know how many people have laid their heads down and took their final rest and have left this earth without fulfilling their God-given assignment here on this earth? Because they let fear get the best of them. Do you know how many people have not walked in the fullness of who God has called them to be because all they do is use their words for curses and not blessings? All they do is gossip. All they do is slander. All they do is talk about other individuals. Loose lips sink ships. Jesus. And the same from that comes from the, the, the captain, my God in heaven, who was on the Titanic. He said... In a room full of people, not even God can sink this ship. And that's where the saying comes from. Loose lips sink ships. Let me suggest something to you. You are the ship. And if your lips are loose, you're going to find yourself sinking yourself. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. In Proverbs 18, verse 21. If you want to see the fruit of life, speak life. If you want to see the fruit of death, speak death. Curse the death things at the roots. Curse, curse those dark things at the roots. But always speak life over you. Always speak life over your babies. Is this making sense to y'all? Speak life. Encourage yourself. You're better than where you are right now. You better. Everybody say, I'm better than this. I'm better than this. Come from out of this rut. Come from out of this funk. You got to know your worth. You got to know your value. I don't care if they got a charge against me. Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? Hey, it is God who justifies. Hallelujah. Romans 8 verse 33. Hallelujah. What then shall we say to all these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Romans chapter 8 verse 31. Hallelujah. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Hallelujah. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. If you do this, you experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than you and I can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, let me say one more thing before I close this letter. Fix your thoughts on what is true and out of the right. Think about things that are pure and lovely and marvelous. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting this praise on the from me and heard from me and saw me doing. And the God of peace will be with you. Philippians 4, 6 through 9. Everybody say, put the word on. Get out of your flesh. Get out of your feelings. Get out of your emotions. Get out of those things. Come out from amongst them. Everybody say, I got to put the word on it. I got to put the word on it. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. There's a woman by the name of Maya Angelou. Raise your hand if you ever heard of her before. A woman by the name of Maya Angelou. And this is what she said. She said something that sounds good to people, but she quoted something. She said, I got my own back. That simple. That profound. She said, I got my own back. And when I read that, when I read that quote, I said, man, who hurt you? Because for anybody to make that type of statement, that I got my own back, that means that you've been burned time and time and time again, and you don't trust anybody. The Bible says that a brother offended. It's harder to be one than a strong city. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 19. 
a fortified city, meaning if that individual has been crossed and that person has already built up emotional walls, it ain't nothing that you can do to penetrate it. Not a scripture, not an encouraging word, nothing, because they already have their mind made up. A fence has taken place. Is this making sense to y'all? Well, I got people squirming. They're like, Lord Jesus, help me. Watch this. Watch this. Stand up. Stand up. I got my own back. Hear me? You better not catch me. I'm serious. You catch me. You, all right, if you move out the way, then something will happen. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. He said what you want me to do. <laughs> no, I said stand behind me, though. <laughs> stand behind me. But don't catch me. Because I got my own back. Jesus. But if you don't, if you, I'm telling you, but if you let me fall, we fall. <laughs> That's how y'all sound in the spirit. Ooh, Jesus. Lord have That's how y'all sound with the angels. Jesus. I got me. I'm good. I'm straight. I'm straight. Goodness and mercy going to follow me. I got all of this. This is straight though. But if I fall back, I'm telling you, you better not let me fall. But I got this. <laughs> Help us, Lord. Is this to That's how we sound and don't even realize it. You quoting the scriptures, but do you really believe them? You still got your own back. It's time for you to surrender and let God have all of you. Hallelujah. Y'all praise God if y'all got something from the world. Right? Everybody standing with me if you possibly can. Everybody standing with me. Let me pray for the people here through social media. Father, in the master's name of Jesus, we bless you and thank you for your faithful promises. Lord, we just say right now, God, that you pick up the broken pieces in our lives, the pieces that are fragmented, God, and that you put our souls back together again. We say right now, God, that we give you full access and full permission to be the faithful merciful God that you are. And Lord, we just believe in you for a divine intervention on behalf of each and every person. Those who don't know you, we believe by faith, God, that you break through on their behalves, God, and that you touch their heart, God. Because your word says in Ezekiel 36, verse uh, uh, verse 26, God, that you are able, Father, to give them a heart of flesh in exchange for a heart of stone. So we believe that the hardest heart is being broken and that your people come into the absolute fullness of who you are by confessing with their mouth and believing in their heart that Jesus is Lord. We honor you and we revere you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Amen. Y'all praise God here if y'all got something from the word.